And uh, Eden, if you're watching, I definitely can feel you screaming at me, and I, I know it's coming. Dimas! I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right, what are we on? Episode five, is it five? Four or five. I lose track after one, so we won't lose track though. We'll, we'll keep count, because we got the whole over under bet still going on. Who's gonna win, who's gonna lose? We will see. Tonight, I think I'm going to get my head out from underneath the play field and strip and clean the play field and rubber it. And then um, I'll deal with rebuilding the mechs later. I want to do more fun stuff. Like, I want to get this play field all, all looking pretty and maybe even LED it. That would be pretty uh, good progress if I can clean rubber and LED this machine tonight. That would be awesome. And then in a future episode, I can deal with pop bumper rebuilds, see to what extent I want to deal with those. Flipper rebuilds, maybe switching from the linear flipper mechs to the older, more reliable flipper mechs. I think it's not that big of a deal to do, so. And then what else do we got uh, in terms of mechs? Is that it? I guess so. I mean, there's the out hole mech. Probably don't need to do much to that. But drop targets and slingshots are already done, so that is a good dent. I gotta find a target as well. I gotta see what this target looks like. It's probably like just a red stand up. It's like this. I think these three targets, what do they do? Spots, target spots, left call. Oh, left column of predators, spot center column, and spot right column. Okay, so they all effectively do the same thing, add to your bonus. So I imagine that's just going to be a red stand-up target. And this is my target stash here. Can I get lucky? Uh, no, that's not right. That is orange. You know, you don't need to go original. You can can get creative with your colors, but it would be nice to have all matching reds here. No, nope, that's not it. Wait a minute. No, that's bullseye. Just another one of these weird, funky looking targets. I don't these 200 switches. Are you telling me I don't have a red? Look, here's one, but broken. Could go translucent, but that might look funny. Another translucent. Uh, maybe, if that cleans up, possibly. I do like the translucent there, pretty cool. Transparent, translucent, one or the other. here another one that's slight potential this is probably best potential yet wait here's a nice dark red one this might be the one I mean bright red that looks more matching eh. that's the best candidate so far and this actually um shit that one lug is broken and there I just finished it off it was on its last leg there but I can always rebuild a switch stack I can just unscrew this and peel out just this one leaf switch here with the target on it I can make it work there we go okay so I think I'll start by um, stripping the play field taking off the plastics and rubbers and and we'll have a look at uh you know what it looks like okay check this out that's the target that was in there that is one of the targets that was in my stash the before and that 
is one that's cleaned up using some Nobis. And I checked the color and it's like, I think it's the identical color. Like even the little, you know, grooves, the horizontal grooves, those are usually pretty caked full of grime, but a novice did a beautiful job. And it's like the right bracket, the um, forward facing, and it's got the diode and cap already on there. This one is missing the cap. And for targets that are in close proximity to the flippers, you need those capacitors on there. They help to um, register the switch on like really quick and fast hits. So I'm guessing that there was a cap on here at some point, yeah. Eh, there should be, there should have been. I'm just trying to see if I see any uh, evidence of it. Anyway, the cap's old, but it should be fine. If I find it doesn't register well, then I'll replace that too. But it's a little novice and a couple of screws and I'll be back in business. All right, target is installed, wired up, and as you can see, check this out, there is in fact a cap on this other target and a different diode. That's like a Zener diode. I don't think that's original, and I don't think this is original too. The other switch, well, maybe the Zener is original. Um, maybe it's not a Zener, but it's probably your standard 1N4001 diode. And this has got a more original looking green cap. So I'll give that a test and uh, I think that should be good. All right, check that out. Cleaned up the other two targets. And then they are looking good. And as you can see, that color is a perfect match. Gotta love that. Now, let's see how well these things register. All right, we'll start with the left. Perfect. Okay, right side. I gave that a good wallop. Hmm, it's good aim, Michael. Now middle. Oh, spoke too soon. Okay, those are working perfect. Gotta love the bonus countdown. Okay, I got most of the plastics removed from the play field. Some pretty original looking rubbers. Uh, these lane guides, I was kind of hoping to preserve, but I don't know. It's a crack there. It's got a little chip out of it. And it's nice to have original, but I think I might need to find some new lane guides, maybe some blue or red, or I don't know, I'll see what's out there. But for all the, um, what do you call it, purists who like everything original, that's uh, probably not gonna happen. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> they, I don't even think they make the uh, Bally hot stamped version of lane guides anymore. So I could be wrong. If I am wrong, then yeah, shoot me a link. But I'll check the usual places, Marco, Pinball Life, and um, Pinball Resource. Yeah, I remember talking to Steve Young on the phone and he was telling me about the hot stamped uh, lane guides being like going near extinct and I bought I think the last few red ones off him but this is going back like pre-covid so many moons ago all right so this is what everything looks like here probably all original rubber it doesn't look like even a single random one was changed and then some pretty crispy bulbs. 
Not too bad though in the corners. I've seen a lot filthier. So I will remove all the balls and rubbers next. I took my photos just in case for rubber orientation. And I've got uh, all the rubbers I need in stock. So that's handy. Anyway, I will deal with that and be right back. Okay, all the rubbers and bulbs are removed. And before I went to town on the play field, I was just gonna deal with the posts for the spinner. And then I thought maybe I would touch up the spinner, but I would clean the spinner first. And for whatever reason, I thought this was a good idea. I had some Novus 2 on my cloth and uh, started cleaning and that happened. So, very bad idea. Um, I'm gonna try and find a source for spinner decals because my initial search came up with nothing. But I may also just try and touch it up. So, uh, that's gonna set me back a little bit, getting uh, sidetracked with uh, spinner disaster. All right, so my buddy Johnny C saw in a previous episode that my spinner was looking like it needed some touch-ups. And at Forked River last night, he brought me this fancy paint here. I'm going to need my glasses or I'm not going to be able to read this. Where did they go? One moment. Okay, I didn't even read this yet. It is acrylic paint, flammable. Black X1 by Tamiya Color. Um, anyway, that's uh, some pretty hardcore stuff. I think it's, I think he said it was high gloss. Looks high gloss. And he also gave me the this package of micro paint brushes for touching up the spinner, but. Little did you know just how much I was going to end up needing this stuff. Um, first thing I did actually was um, did a little bit of um, primer. What is this? Liquitex Acrylic Surface Preparation for All Acrylic and Oil Paints. So I put a little bit of this on just where... The metal was exposed and um, let that dry and then went to town with the black and uh, you know it's not perfect but it's pretty damn good I think I salvaged the spinner check this out eh that's not bad I'm gonna let this dry for like 24 hours and then I'll go in there with some yellow and uh, you know, if there's any other black touch-ups that need to happen, then I can do that. So, I guess I can't reinstall this just yet. I should probably just leave it in place. Um, so, I'm going to move on to uh, other stuff now. Okay, there we go. I just like to do the spinner areas kind of in advance because, you know, to get at the rubbers, um, you got to remove the spinner. So... That's all dealt with. I cleaned these three posts. I cleaned un, like under them with Novus, and that's why I had Novus on my cloth. And uh, Eden, if you're watching, I definitely can feel you screaming at me, and I, I know it's coming. Dimus! I can just see you cringing the moment that I showed this. Anyway, it looks better now, don't you think? I think, uh, I think that's salvageable, so I'm gonna move on. There, that's even better. I just uh, polished up the bracket and it's nice and shiny. Okay, I've been cleaning for maybe about 45 minutes or so and making some good progress. I'm pretty much done from here down and you can just see how nice and shiny the play field is 
compared to what I haven't done. And then, you know, that's what the areas under the plastic looked like. Fairly filthy. Not that bad though. But, oh, I didn't do here yet. I started with this post. I just removed all the posts and just kind of gently set them back in because I'm going to remove them all and um, give them a good cleaning. But look how nice that turned out. Wood is white again. And here, same thing. Here. And yeah, in general, play field cleaned up nice. Wasn't that bad to begin with. I mean, you can hardly tell the difference between the before and after from this angle here. That's before. That's after. So I will clean these posts next. And then do the top half of the play field. Kind of running out of some steam here, so I might take a little break. But I will be back shortly. Okay, that was maybe another 45 minutes. I didn't end up taking a break. I just wanted to keep rolling. But I have the play field done. Oh, you know what I didn't actually do yet? Is do a buffing pass. Now that everything's noviced, I really got to like polish it up. Just buff out any haziness. So I got to go do that. But there it is. Every single post removed and cleaned with my brush. And every square inch, except for that inch there, I gotta get in there. Cleaned meticulously with Novus and a cloth. Cleaned up these white posts, the other target faces, cleaned up the metals. They're looking pretty good now. That one's okay. I think a plastic is gonna cover that anyway. The pop bumper bodies are in real nice shape. And the sockets themselves, so I'll clean them a little bit before installing LEDs. In really good shape. You can tell the bulbs haven't been changed 40 times throughout its life. And the corners cleaned up nicely. I think I got everything. Uh, so other things I want to do would be to clean and adjust these play field switches with my Dremel brush. There's a few of those. Slingshots are obviously already done. And oh yeah, I want to take my Dremel brush in every one of the sockets just to give them a little cleaning. And... If that is the case, I could probably pop in LEDs if I do that. Oh, I gotta clean this metal too. That's crusty. I'll remove that entirely. There was a couple posts um, that were incorrect. I don't know if that was just a factory mess up, but at least a couple different spots. It's supposed to be a wood screw, and it was a machine screw, so I remedied that. I got lots of spares. And my spinner is looking pretty good. Gonna bust out that yellow for the top left corner. But you know what? I may just live with that. Maybe throw a coat of clear on top of that. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna need spinner decals after all. So I'm gonna putter around for a little bit more and I'll be back. Okay, here's a brief summary. I buffed up the play field. I cleaned this metal. I touched up the spinner with the yellow. So I'll add a clear coat to that eventually. I cleaned every lamp socket with my Dremel brush, including the pop bumpers. And my Dremel literally ran out of batteries as I was cleaning the very last socket on the play field. All these switches are polished. 
vacuumed up the play field and the corners. And I think that's about it. Oh, I had to clean the shooter lane area because I had forgot to do that. Well, that's much better now. And, oh, I also got a set of custom apron cards coming from John G on eBay. So, I didn't find them initially, but he has them. So, they are going to be shipped tomorrow. And, um, this is all the old rubber. 45 years of love and we shall replace all that with some brand new ones so i think i'm gonna throw in some leds and some rubber all right it's decision time warm white leds or natural white Think about this natural white through the lens of the camera it looks very blue but actually frontier is pretty blue as a machine but the warm white looks more like incandescent hmm well we're gonna have to place your bet on which i go with because i don't actually know yet we'll find out shortly all right the results are in and warm white was the winner so i've got all the general illumination leds installed and all of the rubber i've got uh unless i missed something but i think i got i think i got everything so posts are looking good rubbers drop targets the spinner got a quite a variety of rubbers there you got your little t rubbers and your your post rubbers and your star post rubbers and your 7 16th rubbers the, the good old three quarter inch rubber the fat style um it did not work there because it was actually uh making the target stick uh, i adjusted every one of the leaf switches and uh i'm digging how this is turning out it's really looking good So I think that's going to be a wrap for tonight. I've been down in the basement for a good few hours. But definitely a, a good dent into the machine. We got the new target installed. So I think maybe next episode might be all the playfield LEDs and then installing my Siegecraft adapters. Where did they go? right here these are um from pinballleds.ca sometimes they get them from there sometimes they get them from pinballrom.com these particular ones come all like together and then you just break them apart oops so there's all the little diodes or resistors for each of the lamps so that they don't flicker but it doesn't happen with the general illumination and surprisingly my controlled lamps for the pop bumpers are not even flickering but trust me they will so probably save that for the next episode i'm not going to do the back box just yet because when i'm working on the machine and it's turned on and it's led and there's no back glass it's just very blinding so i'll just save that for later Anyway, that's some good progress. Thanks for uh, coming along for the tour. See you guys on the next one.